What is going on, Mullen fans? Let's talk about Mullen. All right, so I told you I didn't think this trade was over. We had a very nice save that came into play. It bounced perfectly pretty much right off of our box that we were thinking it probably would. Now, why don't I think it's over? I, I don't think it's over until the vote goes through. I think we have time right now. And, I, you know, I think there's still a bullish thesis that's going on that's driving Mullen to the upside. How far up, I don't know. We're going to find out together. That's why we're watching upside. We're watching downside as we go along. Um, we're also watching that date. I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. That date is going to be important. What happens after that date is going to be important. But as of right now, perfect bounce, you know, kept us out of that dreaded range that we did not want to get back into. We figured it would probably bounce. We have a nice trend line. I don't I don't know where to exactly draw this up at yet, but we do have touch points. So I'm watching it to see if it wants to come back down around 35, 35 and a half cents and make another bounce off of there. So far, trending okay. You know, we're watching our 33 cents. We're watching our down here at 28 cents. We're keeping a close eye on 25 cents. What's happening to the downside? But as long as we can stay above this box, as long as we can stay on this trend line, I'm okay with that. Now, looking at our RSIs on the shorter time frame, you guys know what I want to see. You've been here for a long time. We are bouncing pretty nice. I mean, we will give it up just ever so slightly, but quickly suck back up, give it up, suck back up. So we're coming back down to test it, which would give me an inclination that we might see 35, 35 and a half cents as we come back down and test this trend line. How many times is the trend line going to hold? I don't know, but so far so good. So that's what we're working with. Trend line up here, so far so good, that's what we're working with. Box, great, you know, so far so good, that's what we're working with. So that's where our thesis is coming from as far as everything that's been going on with the Wyckoff theory, how it's moving, how it's playing out. We know things can't go straight up, and sometimes they have to take a breather. So sometimes I'm negative on the stock just for a short period of time, and then sometimes I'm bullish on the stock. You know, it's one of those things. I just want to give you guys honest TA and what my assessment is for the day and how I'm feeling. So I, I think that was okay. You know, I mean, it wasn't record-breaking, but again... I'm telling you, I cannot figure out how it's moving along with the broader markets. I know we can look at longer time frames. We can look at overall and say, hey, when the SPY goes down, Mullen seems to go up. The SPY was up today. Mullen did okay today. Um, it's, it's too hard to read it on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, longer time frames, I, I think we have something going, but I also think that Mullen's in an interesting position where it's kind of doing what it wants on a day-to-day -day, day basis. So I, I, I just can't tell you. But we did do a SPY video. Um, SPY ran pretty good, which uh, I think, you know, if you watch that video that I included a little bit of SPY bonus in, you guys probably did okay. I, I do think that, you know, the overall markets were going to run back up. We were saying that the bigger money, we know they're trying to get out to a degree, take some of that money off the table that was pumped in since 2020. And how they do it is they have to let the markets run at some point, right? You, you can't just keep selling. You have to let the markets run to a degree so that you can continue to sell and be profitable on the way down. So they're protecting their accounts. That's why I tell you guys, protect your accounts. I don't care what you do. Your play does nothing with this. I mean, the amount of volume we trade in a candle, I'm pretty sh positive that whatever you have in your position is not affecting these candles. So that's why I say, I don't care what you do. You have to make your own game plan. You have to trade however you see fit as far as you know your account goes and what you want to do and what's okay with you um, but let's see how it continues to move off of this trend line what i don't want to see is a drop into say 34 85 34 75 somewhere in there we're, t we're talking tenths of a penny so it's very hard to say exactly where but at that point, it could be a quick down to 33.75 to 33.5. 
So we want to see it continue to hold this trend line and continue to move to the upside. It's a little bit sticky because we have a lot of trading that's going on here now. You know, we're filling in some of those gaps pretty nicely where they would be speed zones or they would be quick ups or quick downs. But as we continue to trade in a different range, that volume profile continues to fill out. So we haven't spent a whole lot of time right here. As you can see, there hasn't been a whole lot of trading that's went on. It's either blasted through or dropped right back down through. So we know that as of right now, that is probably a speed zone. But as we're up here in this range, 35, you know, 35, 35 and a half, we got some supports, we got some resistance, so we can kind of hold what's going on there in the trading range. Um, if you're looking at the volume profiles, you can look at these gaps. There, I look at them on the 30 minute to the one hour range, and I I can kind of tell where there's going to be. You know, if we're trending down, if it's going to be a quick down, or if we're trending up, it could be a quick up. And you can use that on any of your tickers. It, it doesn't matter which one it is; they all seem to act accordingly. Just a little bit of side info, I, I, like I said, I, I want you guys to know anything that I know. So if I'm ever, you know, not explaining something or or you feel like you're in the dark with something, leave a comment. I, I will try to explain it just a little bit better because I, I don't ever know what I've covered or how long you've been with the channel or, you know, why we talk about these important levels and zones. But this is one of the reasons why we talk about it, and this is the reason why volume profile is pretty important. And you know what? Webull actually added a volume profile within the last two, three, four weeks. So if you're on Webull, look into how to add that to your chart settings so that you can follow this as well. You can make some adjustments to it. Um, I use TradingView for my trading. Uh, I, Weeble's becoming very powerful as far as charting goes and as far as the uh, extra info that you can have into the markets. And, you know, I, I mean, it is what it is. Some people don't like Weeble. Some people don't. We, obviously, yeah, your trades aren't going to a lit market. Uh, but I'm saying from a free charting perspective, Weeble is pretty powerful right now. And you can incorporate pretty much all of these settings that I have, right? I have the Bollinger Bands, I have Volume, I have the RSI, and I have Volume Profile. And I, I kind of keep it pretty simple. You can draw fibs all day long, you can draw your support lines. So, I, I mean, you have all of these tools at your disposal. You just have to start using them. Um, what I would say is try to do your, your TA and then come and watch the video and see if it lines with what I'm saying because that was one of the main reasons I started the channel I would do my TA and I'd be like man these these other people just are not giving me what I need they're not telling me the <laughs> you know what the charts what the TA says and I, I didn't like that so I started it up just so that we can do TA together and everybody can start to work on their TA and see these levels and I mean maybe Maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't. So like I said, you know, we could give these lines to five different people and five different people would have five different ways to draw them up. But it's just one of those things that as you get more comfortable with what you're doing, you'll get a little bit more confident in your TA and you can compare it to what other people are doing. So you, 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 you may be right, you may be wrong, I may be right, I may be wrong. Um, it's, it's kind of one of those things that we just have to study and we have to work on and we have to do it together. So let's see how we do whenever we come back down to the trend line. How are we looking as far as our RSIs go? Um, I'll look at the RSIs in a minute. Let's look at the Ortex. The Ortex, this is fine to me. Like I said, I wasn't in Mullen for a short squeeze. I want to see the shorts getting out because that means, in my opinion, they have no reason to be here. So why are they getting out? Well, maybe they're realizing they have no reason to really be here any longer. They've made a very good run. They realize maybe potentially Mullen's not going to go bankrupt. Maybe Mullen's going to become something. And you know what? If they made money to the downside, congratulations, right? We, we don't care. It, it's a trading channel. People are going to take their positions 
either direction. We have to accept that. And we just have to create our thesis as to if we're playing it to the upside or if we're playing it to the downside and how it's going to go from there. So looking at the short interest, 10.58% interest of the free float came down about 8.08% today, coming in at 157.22 million live short interest of and um, cost of borrow coming down as well. So as some of those shares are getting returned, we you know we know by now that obviously the cost of borrow is going to go down supply and demand. Still saying 100% utilization. Days to cover saying 1.39. We know that that could be covered in one candle. So that's just another bonus, I guess, of being here, sticking it out with the channel, kind of learning about some of the shorts and you know, volume and that really your position doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, you guys just are here whether you want to make money or you don't want to make money and you go from there. So let's look at the RSIs on the five minutes. It is curling back up. It is setting just a slight higher high. So maybe we'll start to see a little bit of a push coming off of that trend line. 30 minute again has to cross up our SMA. It's a little below 50. So, I mean, it's at 46, 47. That's still neutral territory. It's not bullish. It's not bearish, in my opinion. I want to see it above 50 if I'm going to be really saying, hey, this is where I want to get in. This is playing it to the upside. Our one hour is at what? 48. So again, just needs to heat up just ever so slightly. And our four hour is sitting around 57. So it's cooling off, which tells me it's probably going to come down and test that trend line. And then we'll see how it responds from there. So overall, good day in the markets regardless. I mean, you had nice trades outside of Mullen. Like I said, don't ever be full port into anything. Right now is the perfect time to be cash heavy. You can play these plays, anything outside of Mullen and what you want to do with that money and just, um, you know, continue to protect the accounts. Our overall FIB circles, I mean, we're approaching, right? Here we are on the ninth depending on how steep how short we you know we want to fall or how steep we want to climb is going to ultimately depend on when we hit them um if it comes down considerably into that 27 28 cent range i mean then we're looking somewhere in this week um but i i mean as of right now using that 33 cents as a bounce point i think is going to push us out closer to the time whenever we see the vault come in so we'll keep an eye on the fib circle as well but i appreciate you guys coming back i hope you had a great day in the markets i will catch you guys in the next one as always stay golden people and may your accounts stay green